Okay, so now we are going to look at loops and timing delay modules. We are just going to see how loops are working. Uh, for this purpose, we are taking a very simple program to start with. Suppose there is a program which starts with memory location 2000. I give a simple instruction MVIC 03H. What this instruction is going to do is, it is just simply going to load C with 03 with contents 03. Now since this is a 2 byte instruction, next instruction is going to begin from 2002. Here I am giving a simple instruction DCRC, DCRC. Then I am giving a jump instruction, a conditional jump JNZ2002. If the uh, this what the, okay first let us write the program. This is a one byte instruction, so address for this instruction is going to be 2003. This is a three byte instruction, so next instruction is going to come at 2006. There I am giving halt. Now what happens is, what happens in this program is, we are loading C with 0, 03, then we are decreasing C, suppose in this cycle C becomes 0, 02, then we are going to check C, the contents of C. If contents of C are 0, the, the program is not going to jump. It's going to jump. If jump no 0, see J and Z means jump not 0. If not 0, jump to 2002. If 0, then the condition is false. There will no, there'll be no jump. The program will end. So I'm just, just trying to represent this. First instruction is MVIC 03. Then we are making DCRC. DCRC. Then we are checking. We are checking jump no 0, jump not 0, 2002. So here we are going to check the 0 flags. We are going to check the 0 flag. If not 0, not 0 means if Z flags. 0 flag is 0, not 0 means Z flag is 0. Jump to 2002, 2002, 2002 means jump to 2002, DCRC. If 0 flag is 1, if 0 flag is 1, that is if the condition is not true, if the condition is false, program is going to stop program is going to stop see this jumping this jumping again decreasing c again checking the condition this is the loop this is known as looping this is the loop so now now we're just going to see how many times is this loop going to run see first time what happens what happens we are loading c with loading c with 3 then we're decreasing c so value of c Contents of C become 2. Now we are checking the condition, we are checking the 0 flag. Obviously 0 flag is not 1 because contents of C are 2. So again you reach here. This is the first loop. First loop. What happens in first loop? C is 0, 2. Condition was false. So we had the first loop. Now what happens now again you are decreasing C, again you are decreasing C, now C has become 0, 1. You check the condition, condition is false, condition you got the false condition, condition false. This is the second loop, second times that second time that the loop is executed. Now what happens when again you reach here, again you have reached here. In the third, third, third loop, third time when this happens, now C is 0, 0. Now C is 0, 0. Now you check the condition. Now the condition is true. Condition is true. Condition true means you will get out of the loop. Program will stop. Halt. Program will stop. So total number of times that the loop was executed is 3. Executed is 3. 2 times Number of times loop loop is executed. Executed is 3. Now number of times when the condition was false. False condition. False condition. False condition. False condition. Uh, okay, sorry. See, according to this program, this is true condition. True condition means the program was not 0. So I can uh, better I write it as condition true. 
condition true this is true right this was not zero not zero so therefore we made the jump condition true okay just make a correction this is condition true and this one is condition false condition false means now this was zero so we exited the pura so a uh, true condition for true condition we executed the loop two times and one times we executed the loop for false condition false condition we executed one time total three times the loop was been executed two for, for true condition and one for false condition see this is a kind of if if you have any idea of c language there are two types of loop that we are studying there do while and while what happens in do while is first you perform the task then you check the condition and what happens in while loop is first you check the condition then you perform the task so the idea that we are using here is a do while this is a do while loop do while do while means first we are performing the task then we are checking the condition at the end we are checking the condition now again just see the timing of the loop just see in one loop this dcrc this dcrc is a four t states long instruction dcrc has only one one machine cycle opcode fetch this jnz 2002 this this is going to take up 10 t states if the condition is true or 7 t states in case the condition is false so what happens in one loop one loop of true condition is going to take up 14 t states 14 t states this is also going to take up 14 t states and one loop of false condition is going to take up 11 t states 11 t states so this module this looping module is going to give you a total delay of total time this is going to take total time of 14 plus 14 Plus eleven, which is thirty-nine t states. Thirty-nine t states. If you also include the time of this instruction halt, which takes five t states, MVIC zero three H, which takes seven t states, seven t states. We can just find the total program of the time. See, we have taken a very small example here. We just we just uh, loaded C with three. Therefore, three times this loop was executed. But you, we can use this concept. We are going to use this concept to produce a delay of 50 milliseconds, sometimes 100 milliseconds. Uh, next, we are just going to look an example that how can you produce a delay of desired time period? Suppose you are uh, required a time period of time delay of 50 milliseconds. We can produce a delay using this kind of program. so from now for now you can just understand that this is the concept of looping by using by taking help of conditional jump we can produce a loop and we can produce a timing delay module this is how you produce a delay in a program so now we are going to look at timing delay modules for this purpose we are having a basic module basic module that we are going to use Uh, according to our desire whatever timing delay whatever delay you are uh, wanting uh, you can use that module accordingly just have a look we are using a basic program suppose mvic comma 00 what does this instruction do this just load c load c with 00 next i am having dcrc dcrc and then suppose i'm giving this a uh, label this is just a label uh, because we do not know we are not confirmed for the address of this uh, instructions so i'm just giving it a label x not next instruction i am giving is jump not 0 x not now what is actually happening in this program is we have loaded c with 0 0 we are decreasing c we are decreasing the contents of c and until and unless the contents of c again become 0 0 this loop is going to take place now you know that from 0 0 to again 0 0 we are going to have 256 values 256 number since these are in hexadecimal right so uh, what is happening is this loop is going to be executed loop is going to be executed 256 times 256 times of which of which 250 times 250 times 255 times the condition is going to be true and one one time the loop is going to be executed for false condition false condition now i'm trying to just calculate the t states of this t states for this program total time total time of the program is going to be 
Firstly, I'm just calculating the loop time. Okay, then we can just uh, include this instruction also. So total time is going to be 255 into time for true condition. Time for true condition. See, this this instruction is 40 states long. If the condition is true, this conditional jump is going to take 10 states. State. So it becomes 40 plus 10 t plus 1 into 1 into again this DCRC is going to take place. So 40 plus this is going to take 70. 70 okay uh, and uh, one more instruction we can see here is mvic comma zero zero which is a 70 states long instruction 70 states long instruction so this is the total time of this program total time required for this module which uh, if you calculate these if you just calculate this it comes out to be a total of So this is going to be 3588T, 3588T. Also, also all of you are aware that frequency of frequency of 8085 is 3 megahertz. So this T is going to be 1 by 3 microseconds, which makes this a total of 1.196 milliseconds. Okay, if you just put T, I'm just putting T as 1 by 3 microseconds, okay, and I've made the calculation. You can also try, you just find that this timing module, this module is going to be 1.196 milliseconds. Okay, one more thing, one more thing that you can note here is, since I've loaded C with 00, this instruction is going to take 256 loops to come here. In case I had loaded this with FF, if I had loaded this with FF, this would have taken 255 loops, 255 times the loops would have executed total. Okay, that is another thing. So finally, what we have got is this module can give us a delay of, provide us a delay of 1.196 milliseconds. Now, our concern is, suppose you are given, you, have, you are supposed to write an ALP. You are supposed to write an ALP to produce a delay of 50 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds. So what you are going to do is we are going to use the concept of nested loops, nested loops. What is nested loops? We are going to use this loop several times such that we can produce a total delay of 50 milliseconds. Now see, this, this module can produce a delay of, uh, okay, delay module available. We've just calculated this can produce a delay of 1.196 milliseconds. Now required delay. Suppose you require, suppose you require a delay of 50 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds. Now the question is how many times should I run this module so that I can get a delay of 50 milliseconds. So what do I do? Number of times, number of times module should be, module should be executed how do i do this this is going to be 50 divided by 1.196 when you perform this calculation you're going to get approximately 41.8 41.8 i am taking as 42 that means for getting an approximate delay of 50 milliseconds i should execute this module for a total number of 42 times and you represent 42 in hexadecimal if you just try and represent 42 in hexadecimal then you are going to get you are going to get it as 2a 2a uh, okay where should i write this i am writing it here only this is going to be 2a in hexadecimal so now what am i going to do is i am going to use another register any register maybe b i'll load b with 2a and i'll execute this in, uh, loop inside a different loop see uh, just look at the program now just look at the program what am i going to do i am loading b loading b with 2a mvi b comma 2a same same uh, the see the basic the concept is same what do i do dcr b dcr b and after that i load mvi b with 2a then i am going to write this module just just write the module mvi c comma 00 dcr c jump not 0 x not this is x not then what do I do? What do I do? DCRB 
DC are B and jump not zero Y. This I am making as Y. So this is known as and then halt. Okay, of course halt halt. This is known as nesting of loops. A loop is going to run. This loop is going to run inside another loop. Okay, this is a loop inside another loop. This is known as nesting of loops. So this program, this program is going to run for 42 times, right? Since you've loaded B with 2A. So uh, every time B will get decremented and you're going to check it for zero. So this pro module is going to run 42 times and it will produce a total delay of 50 milliseconds. See, I'm not uh, considering T states for these instructions. Because already uh, the T states for these instructions are negligible in consideration to total number of T states. Already this had 38, uh, I don't know, 1.196 millisecond, it is producing delay. Combinedly also these are going to be some 7 to 10 T states which is not going to make a lot of difference. So you can just focus on uh, this timing module which is producing 1.196 milliseconds and just see how many times this needs to be run to produce a total delay of 50 milliseconds. So this is the program. Uh, you yourself for uh, your practice you can try to write a program which can produce a delay of 100 milliseconds. I'm just giving the solution here. You can write it by yourself and just check and verify. So, uh, if you try to produce a delay of 100 milliseconds, this is just going to become 5-4. Rest everything will remain same. This is how you can produce a delay of 100 milliseconds. So, this is all about loops and timing delay modules.